area that a lot of leaders struggle with. We all feel very uncomfortable, but it is so important to education. In education, people really are our capital. You know, I think if you look at the research, principals can, you know, accelerate achievements if they're effective by like three months worth of learning and a teacher being really effective can accelerate student learning by, I think, almost a year's worth of learning if they're really effective. Um, and the only way people get effective is with feedback and coaching. Yeah, I agree. It's fundamental to, um, you know, coaching is a very part I have a, in my new book. I know we talked about, I have like four hats of leadership. There's uh, leading, training, coaching, and managing. What I find is that too often leading is missing and the coaching is missing. Like people send people to training and then they go jump right to managing. And coaching is about supporting the generalization of learned skills into the natural environment. And um, this is often missing. And as we both know that, you know, the, the research says this, that great trainings are great, but people are going to go right back into the, uh, in the natural environment. They're not going to engage in the behaviors they've been trained in, unfortunately. Um, before we get into good feedback, can you talk about whether it was with yourself or, you know, what, what you learned? What are the issues that you've seen with feedback? Because we want to talk about, so that's, we, we, you know, we talk about the importance of feedback, but why is it a problem? Why has it been problematic? And then we can talk about what people need to know to help their feedback become better. Sure. I think um, feedback ends up really problematic. Um, often when the person giving the feedback doesn't first seek to understand and collect all of the information and they might be giving feedback without really having a full understanding of the scope and they might not be knowledgeable and then they might go in with a way that's kind of abrasive or negative or self-righteous mm -hmm. and it puts the person receiving feedback on the defensive immediately and once they're on that defensive they can't hear your feedback and internalize it and work on that. I've seen that so much, right? It's not about intent, it's about impact. I've seen people, and I know we're going to talk about it, I don't want to give away any of the, the good stuff. Uh, I'll save that for you. Um, but at Van, I've seen a lot of people going out there and giving feedback, and um, they're actually tearing it, it, in the name of student achievement end up hurting student achievement they end up hurting teacher performance um they end up making their job a whole lot more challenging um because they ha don't understand the nuances of feedback in the environment in which you know that needs to be provided uh feedback is i mean it really is everything but no i like to i mean there, there there's so many great analogies for how you know we need to have feedback i think you and i used to talk about like the gps and like for example timing of feedback is important imagine going somewhere and you don't know where the heck you are and you're in a city and you know the gps is only popping on every 15 minutes like man you know you're gonna get frustrated with that because it's not helping you learn the way to get there and you end up learning through a bunch of trial and error and we don't want our teachers learning through trial and error um we wouldn't mind our students doing it but if it's something that we've we've been driving the activity for them to learn they can better assess problem solve make decision take action but that's still not really trial and error it's 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 a contrived situation that's that's helping them along the way so can you give us a can you give uh the listeners a couple examples of when you've actually seen or maybe you've done it yourself i've done lots of not great things you know but you've seen um, maybe something that people can relate to the the misdelivery, the the unintentional poor delivery of feedback. And just a couple of examples of that. I've got plenty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I think when I originally started in my educational leadership journey, uh, I had plenty of miss uh, you know misdeliveries on feet of feedback. I remember I was going to be giving te a teacher feedback on some classroom management and a potential strategy her students um, argued with her about directions and I wanted to provide her feedback on, you know, providing a, an explicit instruction lesson to teach this social skill. And I was very uncomfortable, but very confident in my idea and I think I kind of hid behind the computer and I put the feedback in an email and I just jotted out the, you know, my recommendation without talking to this teacher in person. You know, I think it can be uncomfortable and in an email you might 
not have to face kind of having to talk to somebody. So I think that was one of the biggest mistakes I made. It went over horribly. She was so upset. She was mad. She felt like I was not being supportive. And, you know, so much of that would have been avoided had I went and I talked to her and I listened to her.